All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Um, as it turned out, that uh, big hurricane ended up being kind of a non-event for us here in Southern California, except for some you know rough water on a Saturday during a day, and even then not everywhere. But uh, the good news is it didn't really have any kind of negative impact on the fishing, and it uh, helped to break the heat a little bit, so it's not going to be quite as hot as it's been, and uh, although it is humid. But the, uh, the fishing is still really good in a lot of areas, so let's, uh, let's head to the map. Today's reports can be mostly offshore stuff. There really hasn't been anybody fishing uh, anywhere uh, along the beach very much. I fished uh, Palos Verdes on Thursday last week, and I had pretty good fishing. Nothing really remarkable, just standard summertime fishing. But uh, with a full moon this weekend, it was probably wasn't all that great uh, along the coast. Uh, the only inshore report I've heard was uh, my friend uh, James Little ran out to San Clemente Island and had excellent bass fishing. And... Uh, they slayed them all day long, it looks like, and uh, stayed way, la way later than I would have. They probably had a bad ride home because of it. But uh, if you're thinking about making a run out to Clemente or any of the outer places this weekend, we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of wind Saturday on the outside, but Sunday looks like the day to do it. So um, if you want to do that, either fish bass or go offshore on your smaller boat, Sunday would definitely be your better day. Um, so let's head up to uh, the Channel Islands. Uh, the boats out there are running down and out and fishing Dorado. The Aloha Spirit was out there again the other day. They got a nice score in Dorado and they hooked some bluefin. Said they just saw a ton of them up that way. Those aren't the same fish that they're fishing down out of Long Beach and San Pedro either. There's just more fish in between here and there scattered out. So if you're looking to get away from the crowds, the areas you were planning to look for them in, work, they're not there. You could probably keep heading north and see what you find up that way. Um, but I don't think that's going to be an issue this week because there's plenty of fish uh, down this way as well. So kind of going from north to south, uh, the volume of fish is still between, you know, you know, from the Santa Barbara Island to Nick to Clemente to Catalina. And that, if you make, draw a square in there, that's where the, a lot of the bigger ones are. Um, I know during the uh, Masters Marlin Tournament over the weekend, they got a lot of Marlin uh, in by the boot. And uh, there's another Pesky Tournament this weekend. So if you see a bunch of boats that have outriggers out in their drive back in circles, don't think they're trolling Mad Max or Tuna. They're, they're actually looking for marlin. So uh, unless you want to try and catch a marlin, I'd probably go somewhere else. I know it's uh, confusing when you see a bunch of boats all stacked on top of one another. But if you're up that way, it's probably the marlin guys. Um, there's fish uh, pretty much the same place they've been for two, three weeks now. Uh, in between the islands, on the fathom curves, on the edges of the banks and ridges up there. Um, Decker went out on... Monday, I think he had a charter. They went to go look for bluefin and Dorado. They found a bunch. They got to the bluefin zone off, off the fathom curve there at the back side of Cat pretty early. Saw some signs, some quick signs, but they didn't want to wait around because you want you know get didn't want to wait till the slack tide. So he went and looked around a little bit and uh, found some Dorado. But down below their open water school is real easy fishing for his guys. His charter, they caught only one and had a good time. Uh, most of the three quarter boats and stuff are in that same general area behind and below Cat. So. Those fish are spread all over the place, though. Uh, uh, Jonathan went out yesterday, I think. Today is Wednesday. He went out Tuesday looking for some Dorado for his buddy. And uh, they, everywhere they went, they ran to schools of bluefin tuna. From, you know, he said 30 to 150 pound class fish, I think. And um, while well, they caught some Dorado, they also caught a lot of tuna. But that's just kind of part of the course when you go on Jonathan's boat. But, uh, you know, there's fish from the east end of Cat out to, you know, the... East end of Clemente, down to Clemente Ridge, 289, Dorado, Bluefin. The further south you get, the more yellowfin you get into that way. Um, some of the sport boats up here are starting to catch some more yellowfin, but the, the bulk of that just still seems to be down towards uh, the border in San Diego. Um, and that's because that, water, water, uh, that warmer water is down that way, and it's working up here. And I think that what's going to happen, if I'm going to make a prediction here, which will probably be wrong, the way things have been going, is that... Uh, as those yellow fins slide up, I think that blue fin's going to continue to slide up as well because, um, I mean, we, I saw blue fin feeding on the surface in, I think, 76 degree water the other day, and that's the warmest I've seen it since they've been up here where they're actually up foaming. Normally, they, they don't like that warmer water, but uh, we'll see. So if that yellow fin pushes up, you know, you might be going blue fin fishing on the front side of uh, Anacapo Island next. Who knows? Um, they've certainly been up there in the past. Uh, so yeah, basically all the sport boats up this way are fishing Dorado or Dorado and tuna. Most of the bigger tuna are still being caught at night or by the four-pack guys or the guys flying kites and trolling spreader bars and um, 
Mad Max. Um, and that's all in the same stuff, same area. So if you've been paying attention at all in the last three weeks, you know exactly where to go this weekend if you got your own boat. Um, bad part about that is so does everybody else. So if I were going out, which I'm not on my fish inshore, um, I would take a look at what the water conditions are in the areas where the fish have been biting, water temp, water clarity, and try and look for some areas below there. There's plenty of fish in between, you know, the area that's biting off between Cat and Clemente and down to the Mexican border that's getting a lot less pressure and a lot less attention. So you can actually get out there and get on some of your own fish if you want to, especially on the weekend. Um, if I was going out Saturday, I'd maybe plan to fish more inner waters, um, you know, inside the mackerel bank, for example. That wind line looks like it's laying right at Clemente. Um, and a lot of times that, you know, it'll be perfectly fine inside of Clemente, but once you get, you know, to the backside, you're in the wind. So you might be okay, I don't know. Sunday looks better regardless of where you're fishing. But uh, yeah, the boats out of San Diego, the overnight boats, stuff like that, day and a half boats, they're all fishing up here. Um, their multi-day trips are fishing the bigger bluefin at night, uh, Dorado and stuff like that during the day, and they're doing pretty good at that. Getting some smaller school size bluefin and smaller yellowfin mixed in um, during the day as well. The full day boats out of San Diego are mostly targeting yellowfin and some mixed bluefin, but the majority of stuff down there is yellowfin now and maybe kelp patty draw if you're getting lucky, but uh, that's been a little bit more hit and miss. Um, your best bet at catching fish is fishing up this way uh, this weekend, I think. Um, before I sign off here, I want to uh, take a minute to talk about some, uh, some fish care issues that uh, I realized the other day. So the other day, uh, Matt called me to tell me that uh, one of his coworkers had brought a Dorado that would on a sport boat into work. And Matt, uh, where Matt works is in a group home, and a lot of times they'll bring fish to, uh, to eat. And he was very excited to have some Dorado because we haven't really fished from this year. And uh, he said the guy took that Dorado out of the gunny sack, and the thing was like a mush just a floppy, mushy mess, and when he cut it open, you know, the meat basically just fell out of the fish. Like a, if you guys remember the barracuda days, like a, you know, a barracuda has been sitting in the sun all day. Um, so, you know, if you're not familiar with Dorado, uh, they're one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing fish in the ocean. And because of that high metabolism, uh, they also break down extremely quickly as well. So if you're going on a sport boat to target Dorado, I've seen lots of pictures of guys really caring for these fish properly. I know for a fact that the, uh, the Native Sun, um, I think the Enterprise, and also the, uh, you know, any of the boats, with, the, these are boats without RSW. The boats with RSW are doing fine with it. But if you're going on a sport boat to target Dorado, I think it's worth asking the landing what their deal is with how they handle those fish from the time they're caught until uh, they get cut up. Because if they're just sitting in gunny bags, you're going to end up with a mushy, horrible mess of a Dorado. And um, something else that a lot of guys don't think about, if you're going on one of these trips, um, even if it's a three-quarter day, three day trip, uh, if you have more than a 10-minute drive to the landing, you should bring an ice chest and keep it in your truck or car and have ice in it ready. So that when you get those fillets off the boat, where they're hopefully in some kind of cool environment, you can put them into that so that they don't warm up during the car ride. Dorado are very fickle, and they, you know, they break down really quick. You know, they don't freeze well, so the guys that are keeping, you know, a 10 fish limits are going to be realizing that, hey, you know, they pretty much wasted this fish. Um, I'm not here to preach about limits. I'm just saying, you know, if you want good quality fish, uh, you should really worry about the chain of custody of that fish from the minute it gets onto the boat until it makes it into your frying pan or your grill or whatever, because... Just, you know, even an hour or two in the sun in a, in a dry gunny bag that can turn that Dorado into something that's not going to be all that great to eat later. And if you're on the boat and you're hosing them down with the deck hose, that looks great. The bag's getting wet. The problem is that water coming out of the deck hose is in the high 70s. And it's not doing anything to cool that fish down. Um, if you're on a private boat, uh, it's very easy to take care of the Dorado. Catch them. Dispatch them. You know, you can hit them in the head with a fish club like we do on our boat, or you can, you know, we also spike tuna, but, you know, just dispatch them so they're not uh, going wild anymore. Um, and with Dorado, you know, you don't even need to pop a gill and bleed them. What you need to do is get them on ice quick. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the process of getting fish cold um, and how to deal with them on the boat. As you can see here, I brought a prop with me. And this is a, a container full of uh, 
rock salt or you know ice cream salt basically and um, what this does if you ever uh, made ice cream in the old days you put this stuff on the side with some ice cubes and you turn it and the, the milk actually freezes and turns into ice cream what this rock salt does is it lowers the freezing temperature of water so you know you ever watch like a you know a, a deadliest catch where there's like oh the water is colder than freezing why isn't there why isn't it frozen the water is, you know 28 degrees well if you have salt salt water freezes at a lower temperature than fresh water so by adding salt to your ice you will melt the ice but at the same time lower the temperature of the water so it's a very scientific thing that i can't explain to you but basically i can get a, a you know a seven pound bag of ice throw it in a fish hold spray a little bit of water in there with the decos you know salt water and then put a you know couple cups of this in here and mix it up and I can get two you know full-size big water bottles like one liter water bottles and I can throw those into that ice thing and in an hour they'll be frozen solid and what that means is that you're getting that thing colder than freezing so anytime I'm heading offshore I have a Tupperware full of this and I'll let's say I make probably three bags of ice so you know bigger bags whatever they're seven ten pounds um, the first bag I have is going to go into either my kill bag or my fish box or my ice chest with rock salt and some seawater not a lot just enough to wet everything down a little bit because that ice is going to melt anyway and i'll do that in the morning on the way out and then once i catch my first fish and it goes in there now i start feeding ice into there with it to you know to bulk it out because it's you know you're going to need more the more fish under more ice you need um so with dorado you can just throw them right in there they're good to go they're thin they cool down quick if you catch a tuna of any size um you're going to want to get that thing chilled down before you put in your ice you're just going to burn up all your ice so those fish come up hot so when we catch a tuna on our boat regardless of the size um i will will field dress which basically take the intestines out and take the gills out and then we will put a beach towel over it which will spray with the water hose and uh you know the deck hose to get wet and what that'll do is it'll allow the, the intestines right out of that fish the cavities you know no longer full of hot blood and stuff like the blood's out of the fish so now this towel will cool it down to a certain amount you're going to cool the touch you can stick your hand into the into the cavity and see okay this is not gross warm anymore now i can go under the ice but i see a lot of guys with these bigger bluefin that they catch and they throw on deck and then they go and cut it up and call it good you know you're not getting the best quality meat by doing that and you know we'll chill our fish depending on the size longer so if we catch a you know a, a 30 or 40 pound tuna we'll throw that into the ice by the time we're home that thing's ready to cut you know two hours later it's it's chilled through ready to cut you know 100 pounder you might need to have it in an ice slurry for three or four hours five hours to get it cooled down now if we catch any fish over 100 pounds we will normally leave them in that kill bag overnight and reload on ice and more salt so that by the time that thing <clears throat> comes out of there it's chilled through you know it's uh it's not instantaneous and the the colder you get that meat before you cut it and the longer it's cold the firmer it's going to be once you cut it you're not going to have a big loose mess and you're not going to be also in the same situation where people who don't bleed them gut them gill them those type of things i got a little video here that i might i'm going to put on the end of this or i'm going to send a, uh, add a link to it uh, in the youtube video i'm not sure which one i'm going to do yet but it's very easy to figure out how to, you know, you just make a little cut by their, uh, by their t anal fin, and then you just pop the intestine out, and all you have to do is cut their gills out, and all the intestines, everything out, come out at once. I mean, you're taking these fish to eat. Might well, might as well treat them right and get your best quality product. And you know, by doing so, you're going to be, you're going to have remarkably better results than just leaving the thing on deck or throwing your kill bag with, you know, two bags of ice and no salt and uh, leaving the guts and everything else in. So. He's a pro at this. Yeah. All right. Self-taught. All right. So we, uh, I'm going to show you how to care for your tuna after you catch it. We caught it. We spiked it. We bled it. Let it sit under a wet towel for a while. Cool down a bit before it goes in the ice. Now Jimmy's getting ready to uh, take the guts out. Try to get the guts out. So you just want to go in. A lot of guys will do a diamond cut right here. I just go in the anal vent right here and make a little slit. That's probably plenty. Get your finger in there, and then you can feel where 
everything's connected right there and you just pop that off okay so now there's nothing connecting the guts the guts from his butt all right all right lift up the gill raker and there's a uh, some white where the white's connected right here you want to cut through that right there and that what that does is that opens it up enough where you can get your hands in here and work. A lot of guys will make a cut right here and take the whole gill plate off. Right. But so I just go in there, make that cut right there to get that off. So this is the same thing on both sides. Then you just get your hand in there and go around and separate the gill raker from all this meat right here. Get in there, cut all this back. So it's nothing's here is connected. All right, all the way up to the front. Hopefully I won't chop my freaking hand off. You got to get it all the way up here. So that when you go to pull it, that's all free. So that this side's done right here. Now you got to flip it over. I will be. No country for old men, huh? Work, yeah. 62 year old tech hand. I'm only 61. Same thing. Lift up that gill. That up. Yeah. That's where you make that cut. You want to get back in here. Make that look too bad. pull all of its guts out. Did I get it all? What is going on there? Shit, that's what I didn't cut. Cut it Try to be too clean on this one. There we are. Usually, it all pulls out like that. There you go. So now get all the guts out, the gills out. So now you can just want to stick your hand in there. You could, but if you look down in there, it's empty all the way back. Right. So. And now we're gonna put it in the ice. You got ice and rock salt. And rock salt. Yeah. And salt water. Yeah, just a little bit of salt water today because I didn't have a lot of ice. And that will get the ice colder than... Way cold. Way colder than it would be otherwise. You can throw a water it bottle in there. It freezes water bottles. And it'll freeze solid. I would pump its stomach there and show you guys what's in there, but it's just a little teeny pinhead anchovies. So there's that. As you rinse it out before put it in the ice. Yeah, salt water doesn't show it. You don't want to do this with a freshwater hose. Ever. A little blood in here. So he's got the ice, he's got some salt water, and he's got about two cups of rock salt in there. You can see the salt. Like a, I just, we just made this up just when we caught the fish. You can see the it's rock already salt already starting right there. there. It's kind of like an RSW. We finish after two hours, we'll come out ice cold throughout. Usually I make this up at the dock, on our way out. But we haven't been uh, catching. So yeah, we're, I mean, this is a bass trip. We just happened to do this. So we got two bags instead of three. So let's see if you're going to fit. The turnover. <laughs> and it doesn't fit. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. I hope you guys all have a great weekend and good luck with your fishing.